Let's go over this exercise. So, one way to do this is just to look at it each character at a time. So first, obviously, we have to write a print statement because that's what the problem says. Then inside the quotes, we do it one character at a time. The first character is backslash, so just two backslashes. Next character is a quote, so backslash quote. Then prints, then a quote, which is backslash quote. And then now that'll print backslash quote, prints quote. So now, as you can see, we have a lot of stuff here. And every time we run the program, all this stuff will be printed. Let's say we don't want to do that. We could always just delete the code, but then we might want to keep it for later. We could also just individually comment them out, but then that's time consuming. So we can do something called a block comment, which is basically another type of comment that can comment multiple lines at once. Started Starts with a forward slash and a star and ends with a star or asterisk and a forward slash. Anything in between them is treated as a comment. And again, if I were to put them in quotes, then they would be just treated as part of the quote. But if I were to put the quotes inside the block comment, then they would be treated as part of the block comment. Similarly, if I were to put a block comment, if I were to like put a two forward slashes here, this, these two forward slashes are part of the block comment. But if I were to put the two forward slashes here, this block comment would be part of the line comment. And then these would not be commented. Okay. So now when you print numbers, you don't have to just put them in quotes. You could just put them in quotes like that, or you could print them without the quotes like that. You can also do arithmetic with Java, which is a big part of writing computer programs. So addition, six plus four, that should be 10. Six minus four, that should be two. Six times four, that should be 24. Six divided by four, what would this be? Well, first of all, it wouldn't compile because I have this O as capital. So make sure you know about that. So division isn't like you would think in Java, it's one, basically, this is integer division, which means Java gets rid of the remainder. And then as expected, if we do something like five divided by zero, you can't divide by zero. So then you would get an error that looks like this. So what would this, the following output? So in order to do this, we would have to follow something called the order of operations. Now, luckily, the order of operations is the same as in Java. As in real math. So we would first do parentheses, then times and that is a forward slash, basically division. Then finally, plus and minus. So the output of that would be, so first three times five is 15. Four times six 
is 24. Then we do 24 divided by 5, which in Java is 4, not 4.8. Then we add them together to get 15 plus 4 equals 19, as shown right here. So, we can also do this with decimals. 2.4 plus 4.8, for example. That would output 7.2. And actually, if we were to print this right now, it's actually in here, it's 7.199999 with a bunch of nines, basically. And the reason of this is because Java stores numbers in binary. So basically, there's going to be some imprecision when converting between decimal and binary. So you can always expect some imprecision with these decimal numbers. Two point four minus four point eight, and that's negative two point four. And here, there is no imprecision. Not every time there's imprecision, but you should expect to have some imprecision in the worst case scenario. Two point four times four point eight, and that would be eleven point five two. And two point four. Two point four divided by four point eight, and here it's not integer division; it's double division, well, decimal division. So basically, it's point five. We're not doing the we remove the remainder thing. And now, if any number is a decimal, then we treat the entire thing as a decimal operation involving decimals. So, for example, if we do five divided by two. That would be 2. If we do 5 divided by 2.0, then since 2.0 is a decimal, it's 2.5. We can do 5.0 divided by 2, that's also 2.5. And finally, if we do 5.0 divided by 2.0, that will be 2.5. And another thing, when you divide by zero in, and one of them is a decimal, then you don't get an error. So basically, one divided by 0, 0.0, that's actually infinity. And if we do negative one divided by 0, 0.0, it's negative infinity. One point zero divided by zero, and that would be infinity. Basically, you get the point. And if it's one divided by zero, it would be an error. And if we do zero divided by zero with decimals, then we would get NAN standing for not a number. In addition to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, Java has another operator called the remainder operator, which is denoted by percent. The, basically, the result it gives is the first remainder when the first number is divided by the second number. So the remainder when 5 is divided by 2 is 1. So 5% 2 is 1. Similarly, 8% 3 is 2. And if we do something like 6% 0, that would cause an error because we're basically dividing by zero and then taking the remainder, but we can't divide by zero. If we put a negative number first in the percent, for example, negative 5% 3, it'll give, give a negative number. So in this case, negative 2. And you shouldn't put negative after the percent in most circumstances. Percent comes, like has the same priority 
as multiplication and division in the order of operations. So for example, if we do 3 times 2 percent 1 plus 3 percent 2 times 1, then the way we would see that determine the output would be 3 times 2 is 6, 6% six 1 is 0, so then 3 times 2% 1 is 0, then 3% 2 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so then 3% 2 times 1 is 1, so then when we add them up, we get 1. Okay, so try this one. 1 plus 2 times 3 percent, 4 plus 5 percent, 6 times 7. And unpause the video when you're done. Basically, for this one, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 percent, 4 is 2. So 2 times 3 percent, 4 is 2. 5% 6 is 5, 5 times 7 is 35, and then so that means 5% 6 times 7 is 35, and we just add them up to get 38. So basically, it's similar to normal math, and if you're able to do determine the output quicker than just do, doing this using normal math, then you can do that. Percent can also be done with decimals, and it works basically the same way. So if we do 5.3% 2.5 over here, then we get, with some imprecision, 0.3, because when we divide 5.3 by 2.5, the remainder is 0.3 with, in Java, some imprecision. And otherwise, percent works the same way in, with decimals as in with no, normal numbers. So far, we've learned how to print basically sequences of letters or characters called strings. And we've also learned how to print arithmetic and numbers. You can also print strings and arithmetic together. So for example, a, B, C, D, e, F, G, and then with a plus sign to show that they're merging together, and then 7. So now we print A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 7. Basically, the 7 is merged into the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you can do this as many times as you want. So for example, A, 1, A plus 1 plus B plus two plus C, for example. This would print A1, B, two, C. Now, so we can do stuff like this. Printing one plus one equals, and then a plus sign to show the merging of the numbers, and then one plus one. Now, unfortunately, this won't print 1 plus 1 equals 2. This will actually print 1 plus 1 equals 11. And the reason is because Java follows the order of operations. So first, we do 1 plus 1 equals as a string plus 1. So then now we we'll do, so for Java first merges the 1 into the string to get 1 plus 1 equals 1. Then merges the remaining one into the string to get one plus one equals 11. There's two ways to fix this. One way to fix this is to use two print statements. Basically, first print the 1 plus 1 equals, then print the 1 plus 1. However, that may be time consuming when programming. So another way 
is to use the order of operations, which states that parentheses goes first. So we can do one plus one equals, and then inside parentheses, one plus one. That would give one plus one equals two because the one plus one is calculated before getting merged with the string. Okay, so similarly, if we do four times six equals, and then plus four times six, using the order of operations, we see that four times six comes first, so then this would just be four times six equals 24. Of course, in addition to adding strings and numbers, you can add two strings together. Like that. However, you cannot subtract two strings because this will happen. So QWERTY minus RTY, it won't even let you compile the program. Basically, you can't subtract strings. Neither can you multiply strings. That's also bad. as you see right here, and obviously you can't divide strings. So, if we do something like one minus, no, two minus one equals, and then plus two minus one, what would this do? Well, actually this would cause an error because we're first, we're first merging the two into the two minus one, and then we're subtracting one from a string, and we can't do subtraction with strings. So this subtraction is performed too late. So we would need parentheses. If we do multiplication, division, or percent, however, then we wouldn't need to do that. Try these two exercises and unpause the video when you're done. So basically the first one, first we do, since multiplication comes before addition in the order of operations, we first do one times two, which is two. Then we do three times four, which is 12. Then one, two, three, four, five as a string plus two is one, two, three, four, five, two as a string. And one, two, three, four, five, two as a string plus 12 is one, two, three, four, five, two with 12 added at the end as a string. And then the last one, two times three is six and then two times three at near the end is also six. Then since it's all addition, we do left to right. So six plus one is seven. Then seven plus the empty string is seven as a string. Then seven as a string plus six is 76 as a string. Then 76 as a string plus one is 761 as a string.